We've been obviously, like you said, doing some suspension testing. It's been pretty heavy the last couple days. Uh, we got the we got Ziggy out here. We got the guys from Showa. So it's been a it's been a really productive two days, and I think we're learning a lot, and and I'm learning as well. You know, I've. I have a certain style of, of motorcycle that I, I look for. We're just here putting in the time and doing the laps and the motos to try to make sure that it's, it's going to be on point so we don't have to hardly touch it on race day. A lot of guys like a really stiff setup for Supercross, like a lot, of, a lot of safety. You know, like if you drop in the whoops, it's going to be good. But for me, with me being a shorter guy and, and I'm like only 140 pounds, I definitely look for something that's a little bit more on the rideability side. I want something that I can, I can attack every, every, every straightaway, every inch of the track um, for 15 minutes. J-Mart's one of those that's a little bit challenging because he rides so well and goes so fast, yet he's kind of small of stature. So that, that scenario is kind of always the toughest to find the sweet spot. I wasn't missing in this set of whoops, was I? I wasn't, I felt like I wasn't missing. Sometimes the rear does, the front comes up tall and I think that's why I struggle with that, where I was telling you guys about that hand feel, because I am bottoming this fork. I feel it, I bottom it by Josh up there. I bottom it when I land in the triple. But initiating the turns, you know sometimes like if you sit, you can initiate, you lean, but my standing ability, being able to ride the edge was way better. So the character piece we talked about earlier, more in line with what you're looking for here? Yeah, I, did, I, did, I really liked how it settled for the turns. I really liked it. I think we would just have to tinker off of it to figure out how to make it. You know what I mean? She's a little soft. Yeah. With Jeremy, he's a bit more skilled on uh, settings knowledge-wise. Uh, sometimes it's a really good thing, and then sometimes it can also hinder because you can uh, drive a direction. But uh, with him, you know, he'll do his little bit of time on the bike, uh, whether it's you know five, six laps. He'll pull in. Uh, give a direction or the info. Um, at the same time, all of our guys that are here, uh, whether it's myself or the suspension guys, will actually like try to dissect what he's seeing, but visually on our side. So if we see something that he's not necessarily feeling, we might ask him in a roundabout way, uh, not trying to point out what might be an issue, but at the same time, give him the opportunity to, to think about it and give us the feedback while he's still on the bike so we can do maybe a clicker adjustment in or out and then that kind of will drive our direction potentially and then we'll go back based off of what he's saying he feels and then what we're also seeing and we'll make a change and that's how we we do it again and then again and again. The direction of where he wants his setting versus all of the other team members you know same bike same suspension components is quite different so I feel like on our side on the team side you want to go in small changes that way and um, just because you don't want to step too far out on the branch and have the branch break so uh, it's it's a process I don't always have the answers I can tell I'm really good at telling them what it feels like or what it's doing but I couldn't tell you how to open the fork and what, what to change in there to make it for what I'm looking for. And, and we all want everything now. Like, I would love to be a champion right now in Supercross. I would love to have, you know, uh, the outdoor title that I got. I was pretty much winning in 18 when I got hurt. But it's kind of the same thing as like with suspension. Um, it takes time to, to learn each other and to also ride. And over time, you grow this bond and you're able to kind of figure out and kind of click and find what you're looking for. And we'd all wish we could get it right in the first setting, um, but you know, it's something that we, that we always work on. I think we get over time.
like I wanna, I wanna say, guys, like yeah, let's let's feed off of it. But the reality is, is we'd have to do a moto on it. Yeah, for, <laughs> for sure. And I, but I do, I do think that comfort piece that he's looking for, when that comes, this is gonna ease and relax a little bit. So, Trey, good job. I, I think you end on a win, okay? And continue to work on where we go. So out of the finish, you know, what, what more do you need? I mean, just from little bit to big. Uh, you need a little bit more for like the bigger hits, like when you land off the triples. Or if you o like kind of OJ a, tr a three into a turn and you kind of like, it gets a little low sometimes. Or, or maybe you just put more control in it. You know? Well, let's do that. But otherwise, guys, like I, I think this is, this is positive. I think it's very positive. Like I haven't hit my turns like that. Like just for coming out cold turkey and not riding for the last 30 minutes, and then just being able to lean into the turn is good. Really good. Where we leave off, if it's a, a positive, we always use the off day as. Uh, kind of our R&D day. So we'll put the stuff back on the dyno, um, get proper information of what it's doing internally uh, through the data numbers, and then we always set ourselves up for the next day. Uh, so Thursday is gonna be the case. Typically you'll run maybe like two other sets of forks, one option a different direction, and maybe one that continues that direction. So uh, on Thursday when he gets to the point where he's ready to try something, we're already a step ahead of him and we can move forward faster. Um, so that's pretty much what we do at the, by the end of the day.